I have friends that are very sciencey and tech based, and they are quite convinced that the concept of structured water is nothing more than new age hooey that is being sold by charlatans to these poor, naive, uneducated, new age saps. But on the other hand, my more new agey friends believe that structured water is about as close to magic as, as you can get. And that simply thinking certain thoughts or putting crystals near the water or sending vibrations into the water can transform the water into an elixir that can cure diseases and give you more energy and bring you even closer to enlightenment. Personally, I have no problem with whatever opinions my friends hold. I'm not here to convince anybody or sell an idea or create converts. However, I am interested in what really is, I guess, what we would call the truth. So I had an occasion to test this idea of structured water. And that's what this video is about. It's the tests that I did and also tests that others have done and the evidence to support one side or the other. And I'll, I'll say right up front that there is absolutely no question something about the quality of structured water that is different than non-structured water. And I'll be presenting that information and evidence here. But, but first, uh, I guess we would have to define what are we talking about when we say structured water. In this context, there are two definitions. One is structuring water by magnetism. And the other is structuring water by movement, kinetic energy. And the reason it's even called structured water is because the claim is that the magnetic field or the kinetic energy will cause a change in the structure of the water. Some kind of a change. Now on one end, on the, on the more sciencey side, the argument is no, water doesn't have any structure other than the structure it always has. And it doesn't matter if the water has been moving or magnetized or whatever, the structure of water is a bunch of tetrahedral molecules. And that's it. End of story. And on the other side, if the claim is that, and there has been some, I will say, non-scientific, but not completely uncompelling, tests and evidence that suggests that water is very sensitive to thoughts, or energy, human energy, or even plant energy. And it's this energy that is that causes change in the water and which the water remembers in some fashion. In the experiments here that you'll be seeing the results of, I'm only using kinetic energy to m modify the water. I had started out with magnets, but when I got more into the research, uh, I, it became clear that the level of magnetic field that you need would, was impossible for me to create with the resources that I have. Not just that, it's dangerous because when you have magnets that are that powerful, uh, it's, you, you need the right equipment or you, know, you could lose a finger easily or worse. So I abandoned doing any of the magnetic experiments and just stuck with the kinetic experiments. Okay, so what does that mean to kinetically structure water? Well, basically, it means just keep the water moving. The original idea of the structured water actually goes all the way back to the early 1900s when an Austrian forest caretaker, Victor Schauberger, uh, realized that water that has been sitting in a container or a barrel is not the same as water that flows through the river. And, and Schauberger was quite an accomplished person. He wasn't just a forest caretaker. He was also a, a naturalist. He is a parascientist. He was a philosopher, an inventor, and biomimicry experimenter. Films have been made about him. He wrote a number of books on everything from the nature of water 
to the sacred geometry of nature. So he was quite accomplished, and to this day, you know, has a following. People study and read what he had to say. And his son followed in his footsteps, and from the ideas and philosophy and work of both the son and the father, Schauberger's, uh, a device was created specifically to reanimate the water back to its natural state. Uh, this device was built in the 1980s, and it was called the Martin Wasserwerbler, which I think just means water spinner. And it's a really simple device that just spins the water around. It just creates like a little whirlpool as the water comes out of the faucet. And that's it. And this is basically the same idea that I incorporated in my device. However, my device, as you'll see, is a little more persistent than the Wasserwerbler. But there are a number of devices, industrial level devices, that are used to structure water with pretty impressive results. I mean, it's used in farming in a number of places. I think uh, the uh, second largest strawberry producer in Australia uses structured, magnetically structured water and claims he uses significantly less water to get a significantly better product. But we'll get more into th those details later. So now let me show you the device that I ended up using. It's gone through a few evolutions. The first device was really simple. It was just a magnetic stirrer, like the kind they use in laboratories. I bought one and just started spinning my water, creating a whirlpool inside a jar of water. And that worked for a couple of months, and then the motor burned out. Okay, it was a cheap spinner, so I bought a much more expensive spinner. Uh, and it burned out too. It didn't even, it, it burned out within a month. It just burned out. So I realized, you know, I just have to make my own. So I did. And this is what my little structured water device looks like. It's pretty simple. I just took a large 5, 10 liter container uh, of water that I, I bought in a store, cut the top off, turned it upside down, and then took uh, a, a returnable Coca-Cola bottle, turned it upside down, cut the top off of that, and then mounted it inside. Underneath the container is a metal box that I had laying around, and inside that metal box is a magnetic pump. It's only magnetic. The magnetic motor has nothing to do with magnetizing the water. Magnetic pumps are used when whatever the liquid you're passing through can't touch any of the machinery. So, for example, a magnetic motor is really commonly used in beer taps to pump the beer out because you don't want to contaminate the beer. Fish tank pumps, for example, are not magnetic, obviously. They're cheap pumps, and the water gets really contaminated with the plastic of the pump. And the reason I know this is because the first pump that I used was a fish tank pump. And after like three days, it was the water tasted like plastic. So hermetically sealed chamber that uses magnets to move the water. The pump obviously has an input and an output. And in the diagram shown here, the red line is the output and the green line is the input. I just have the input is basically sucking water from the bottom of the tank and the output is pushing water into the top of the tank and it naturally creates a whirlpool and you can see the whirlpool goes from the very top all the way down to the bottom it's a it gets very 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 small at the bottom and in fact one of the tricky things in building this was determining how big the hole had to be at the bottom of the coke bottle uh, to create the right size whirlpool. If the hole is too big, the water flushes out too fast. If the hole is too small, it doesn't create a whirlpool. That I ended up with is about three millimeters in diameter. So far, the pump has been working great. So how did I test this? Well, basically, I just drank a lot of this water every day. But if I was going to test something in me, I was I had to determine, all right, what is it that I'm going to test? 
What am I looking for? Well, considering our body, of course, is mostly water, but within our body, the thing that is really mostly water is our blood. So I thought I would take a blood test before, drink this water for some months, and then take another blood test and see if there was any difference. So that's what I did. I was not expecting the pretty spectacular results. And these are those results. What you're seeing here is a chart that shows my blood tests, specifically cholesterol, triglycerides, and HDL, across seven quarters, a quarter being three months, annual quarters. On the left, as you can see, my cholesterol is high, and my triglycerides are okay. However, I had a number of different tests that I could uh, draw from at the time that I was doing this experiment because at that time I was actually getting a lot of blood tests because I was having some medical work done that required a lot of blood tests. So I had maybe three or four different blood tests within a week and they all tested my lipids and triglycerides and cholesterol. I chose the test that had the lowest numbers. One of the tests that I had showed my triglycerides at 700 milligrams per deciliter, which is insanely high. <laughs> it's not supposed to go over 150, and this was 700. Another test showed these numbers. I mean, it was a little suspicious that two standardized tests came up with numbers that were so insanely different. I suppose it's possible that from one day to the next I did something or ate something or whatever that uh, had a radical effect on my triglycerides. In any case, I chose the most conservative numbers of any of the tests that I was looking at. During the six quarters or seven quarters that followed, my diet didn't change. And my diet is not that great by normal medical heart health standards. I mean, I live in Argentina, so half of my diet is meat, and I drink a lot of wine, because meat and wine here is very, very good and very, very cheap. So, and then the rest of my diet is uh, vegetables, although every morning I have eggs. I have eggs every morning. And that hadn't changed for the entire series of this test. So nothing radically changed in my diet that would account for the change in my blood panel. I drank about a liter a day of this water that was in a permanent whirlpool for about nine months, as you can see by the red line on the chart. I'm not taking any prescription drugs. Uh, I just take the 80 milligrams of aspirin, which I've been doing every day. For about five or six years, I have been taking two different types of enzymes, which are specifically designed to clean out your veins of plaque and scar tissue, etc. One is called serapeptase, one is called natokinase. And that's it. So I was had already been taking those drugs for a couple of years before I took the first blood test here. And I haven't changed any of that through the, the next the following two years when I took the second blood test. But as you can see, my numbers radically improved. The cholesterol dropped down to within the upper cholesterol limits. Uh, the ratio, which ideally is 3.5, dropped down from above what's considered the safe upper ratio limit all the way down to 3.5. I mean, it's like, it's perfect. It's right there, right on it. So, this was a radical change for the better. All right. So I thought if this, in fact, really did, if it was this water, perhaps there is some research out there on the effect of structured water on blood. And there was. In fact, there was quite a number of studies done specifically on that. And there was also a meta-study on all of these different studies. And that study is called Structured Water Effects on Animals by Michael I. 
Lindinger, PhD, from who is the president of the Nutraceutical Alliance Incorporated in Canada. And just for the record, the mission statement of Nutraceutical Alliance is to be the global leader in evidence-based design of nutraceutical supplements and scientific assessment of nutraceutical ingredients and health supplements and foods for the benefit of humans and animals. And animals seem to be one of their primary markets. So they're, they're not appealing to hyperbole or new age hoopla because they're dealing with industrial level animal products. Horses, cows, and of course domestic animals. So right in line with what we would like to see. And the president of that company reviewed all of these other studies in a meta-study. And not surprisingly, the results he found were quite consistent with the results I found because the blood panel work done on animals after being exposed to structured water, although his study was just magnetically structured water, showed very similar beneficial results. He also showed that magnetically structured water has quite measurably different properties. Conductivity, pH, density, surface tension, as you can see in the chart, as well as its ability to absorb infrared radiation in that spectrum. There is simply no question that at least magnetically structured water provably has an effect on the structure of water. End of debate. Now, whether that is also the case for the kinetically structured water, well, I thought I would try some other experiments as well, specifically on organic materials, because I, I can't really do infrared absorption or conductivity or surface tension, because I don't have the equipment for that. But there were some tests that I could do. And rather than get into all of the nitty-gritty details of the technical aspects of the test, here's the general results. In this photo, on the right, you're looking at the whirlpooler that I was using at the time when I did these tests. On the left, we have a gelatin capsule. It's a fairly hard, brittle gelatin which were placed inside two jars of water that had been sitting in the same temperature, consistent temperature, and they'd been sitting for a number of hours before I used them, because obviously if one water is spinning and the other is not spinning, they both have to be the same. And I just dropped a pill into each one of the jars. And it's not terribly obvious here, but it is obvious to some degree that the jar, the water that was structured, had a m much quicker and more uh, solvent-like effect on the gelatin than the common water. Uh, the pH was the same in both, but the more interesting test was the one at the very bottom, where I took two starch-based pills. I placed one pill each into each of the jars of water. Then took a picture every two minutes. And you can very clearly see the one on the top dissolved much faster and more aggressively, I guess we could say, than the one at the bottom. I did this test about 10 times to make sure this wasn't an anomaly. And every single time, it was the same. The structured water had a more dramatic solvent effect on the pill than the non-structured water, which was the same thing that I was seeing with the gelatin capsule. All right. I thought then I would try another test. Unfortunately, I don't have any photos of it, but it might be just as well because it was kind of gross. <laughs> I uh, Two jars of water, and I put an equal size a little smaller than a ping pong ball, round ball, of mozzarella cheese. And I dropped them into the water. I didn't know what to expect, but I did know that cheese and fats 
in general are hydrophobic, meaning they don't naturally mix with water. So they sat there, maybe three or four days, and the water kind of was getting a little more mucky, and you know, it was getting a bit gross. But after a few days, the cheese inside the structured water began to dissolve and break apart, and bubbles began to appear on the outside, very, very small bubbles began to appear on the outside of the cheese. And the cheese, which was sitting at the bottom of the water, in the structured water, the cheese began to float. And there were many small pieces of cheese, like the cheese was disintegrating in that water. And it floated, and now the bubbles were getting quite large. It was clearly the cheese was fermenting. And the cheese in the common water was just sitting there being gross. So there was a lot more interaction going on in the cheese that had the structured water than the common water. This was really the final argument that, yeah, structured water is radically different than non-structured water. And it seemed very clear that the difference is the structured water had more, I guess we could call it energy. Its solvent-like properties became enhanced it interacted with its, whatever it was interacting with, with much more energy. But where did that energy come from? Well, was it coming from the spinning of the water? Well, where would that energy get stored then? The pH was the same, so it wasn't being stored atomically, as it were. The temperature was the same. It wasn't being stored as heat. None of the properties uh, that, that we use to measure water changed, but the actions of the water were very, very different. So what would account for water having the same physical properties, as far as how we measure it, but having more energy, or I think it would be more correct to say having lower entropy. And the reason that's more correct, we'll get into, in just a bit but the reason that is a preferred description of the water low entropy water is because entropy which is typically associated with levels of structure low entropy things have more structure high entropy things have less structure of course the whole field of chaos and entropy is really complicated and has a million different dimensions to it, but that's a general understanding that as entropy increases, so does chaos. As entropy decreases, there is more structure and there's more order. Here, we are somehow, with the spinning of the water kinetically, we added so some structure to the water that we can measure by its level of entropy. And we measure its level of entropy by how it interacts with the things that it comes into contact with. That all seemed pretty cut and dry to me. I mean, cut and dry in the sense that, yeah, absolutely, structured water is different than common water. And one of the ways it's different is it's more of a solvent. Structured water is more of a solvent than common water. And as water is a solvent, one of the main properties of water is its solvent abilities, we can say that structured water acts more like water than common water. And as water is the basis of all life, changing the properties of water could have dramatic beneficial effects on the properties of life. If, in fact, my experience with my tests and the experience of the tests with the animals shows that you can improve your cholesterol just by drinking water, well, that might make a major dent in the $19 billion a year industry based on cholesterol medicine, which is probably why you're not going to see a lot of research on this. So this is the part where I have to say, I am not a doctor. This is not medical advice. This is for 
educational and entertainment purposes only. <laughs> what happened with me and the animals, I am not saying, will happen with everybody else. But I am saying it's certainly enough to justify further research. But if I don't say I'm not a doctor, this is not medical advice, and I am accused of allegedly claiming that drinking structured water can have a beneficial effect on your cholesterol, I will be treated as a criminal. Before I end this post, I want to make a reference to a thesis by a student from the University of Colorado uh, whose name is Fabian Patok, P-T-O-K. I guess that's how you pronounce it. And the name of the thesis, which he wrote in 2014, was Alternative Irrigation Methods, Structured Water in the Context of a Growing Global Food Crisis Due to Water Shortages. And in his thesis lays out how, with supporting evidence, structured water, because you can use so much less of it and get better results, it would be ideal for managing food crises due to water shortages. But again, you're not going to see any progress in that direction. At least not anytime soon and not much. But the potential takeaway from all of this is that water alone could have a radically beneficial effect on both individual health as well as coming closer to ending world hunger. And it's not a crazy thought to think that it is water that can solve both personal and global problems. Because water is life. No water, no life. That's a really simple, provable, well-accepted reality. In part two of this, I'm going to get into the thalonic elements of this experiment, specifically the tetrahedral structure of water and its effect on energy.